Scholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk about first and second moments of area. I get this question a lot, and I can sure see where that question comes from. First and second moment of area seems like a very abstract concept, and yet we talk about it in terms of physical things. Well, how is that? Here's how. When I've told you before, when mathematicians see something enough times, they give it a name. Now, they don't always give it a very useful name, and this might be one of those times. When mathematicians see something like, saw this form of expression enough times, they decided to call it a moment of area. Well, a moment is a force times a distance, a moment of area would be an area times a distance. I guess I could see that, that makes sense. And by the way, this dA here implies that's a double integral. Mathematicians are real big on writing things as compactly and as precisely as possible. And I, I pretty much want my mathematicians that way, so I'm okay with that. That n means you know, just the power at which you take this distance to. So if n is 1, you have a first moment of area. n is 2, you have a second moment of area, and so on. In mechanics, we mostly just use first and second moments. Well, why? What do we do with them? Well, if I want to find the centroid of, say, this triangle here, um, let's say I want y bar. Y bar, the, the distance of the centroid from this axis there, maybe it's down there. Now we know from, from geometry and from tables and stuff, that distance is one, th the, the distance of the centroid is a third the height of the triangle. But we should be able to show it here. Well, this is S over A. Well, S is called the first moment of area. Why S? I, I don't know. There's 26 letters, pick one. Somebody pick that, that's fine. And I'm going to put that uh, double integral there just to remind you that really is area. Okay, so that's a first moment of area, and that's area. That's how an, a mathematician figures out the area of a shape, double integral across the area. And so this is really going to be like dx dy or dy dx. Since y appears there, I'll put the y first, but it doesn't really matter. You can do either. The, the dy and the dx can appear in either order. It's fine either way. So that's how you figure out a centroid. Well, let's try it. Um, the the uh, slope of that line there is 4x. And if I happen to call the uh, origin that point right there, then that the, the equation, that line, really is just 4x. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out s, and I'm going to give myself plenty of room here. Now I'm going to do dy dx because what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate up first and this way, or horizontal second. Absolutely fine. There's no reason not to do that. You can do them in reverse order if you like. Math doesn't care. So if I start at zero, which I'm going to, but I'm, I don't know, you know, the upper integration limit's not a number now, it's a function. Is that okay? Can I do this? Absolutely, not a problem. Math doesn't care if that's a function and not a number. All right, so from, when I go from here to here, I'm going to go from 0 to 25. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, few, I'm going to integrate across that area, and since it's symmetric side to side, I'm just going to double the result. That's fine. Now, if I wanted to break this into two integrals and have two equations, so I'd have another term back here where that was minus 4x plus some, uh, something else, uh, that's absolutely fine. You can do that too, but they'll give you the same answer as this. I want to make it easy and short for this video, so I'm going to do this. Well, let's, let's evaluate this first integral, the inside integral first. So I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to worry about the outside integral yet. I'm going to put dx way over here. Well, the integral of y is 1 over 2y squared, and I'm going to make that go from 0 to 4x. Okay, no problem. Well, how do you evaluate that? Eh, let's see, I'm let's make sure I put the 2 in there. Okay, so that's going to look like 4x squared is going to be 16x divided by 2, so that's going to be 8x squared. Put the 2 there. Um, that goes from 0 to, I'm sorry, I've already evaluated that. So if you evaluate this, I've got to integrate again. So what I'll do is I'll do this. All right, when I integrate, I'm going to get 8 over 3x cubed. And that goes from 0 to 
25. Those are my integration limits. When you do this, you get 8,333.33 forever and ever. And that's going to be distance times an area. So it's actually going to be, if you're doing this in, say, millimeters, it's actually mill millimeters cubed. So I got that number. I know that S equals 83,333.33, whatever. Okay, that's going to be in, in, let's call this millimeters, millimeters cubed. Now, the next thing I need is the area. Well, that's pretty easy because I've already got that tabulated. I already know that area is one half BH. And that's one half. The base is uh, of my triangle is 50, and the height is 100. And that gives me an area of 2,500 square millimeters. Well, Y bar must then be 8333.3 over uh, 2,500, and that's going to give me 33.33 millimeters. Is that right? Well, the, the, the centroid of the triangle is uh, a third of the way from the base to the top, or 100. That's right. So we just got the right answer, and we did it using the way you know, every, every mathematician does it, using a first moment of area. Okay, there's first moment of area. Let's talk about second moment of area. Well, second moment of area, let's see, I don't need that anymore. Second moment of area is, in the mechanics world, what we call area moment of inertia. And we care about it because area moment of inertia tells, about, tells us about the stiffness of things like beams. Now, beams have two kinds of stiffness. They have stiffness due to the material, which is the elastic modulus and stiffness due to the shape, which is the area moment of inertia. So I've got this giant piece of wood here a uh, guy gave to me, and it's really, really nice. I'm going to make a guitar out of this, maybe more than one. And so here's what it looks like, all right? I think this is yellow spruce. Okay, if I am loading it from the top, same using it to support a floor, if I put it that way, it's relatively stiff. If I put it that way, it's flexible. So if you look at how floors are held up in houses, the beams under them, called floor joists, always look like this. It makes the floor nice and stiff and nice and strong. If you made it this way, the stiffness would go way down, and it would feel like you were walking across maybe a trampoline. Okay, very flexible, not good. The difference in stiffness between this and this is defined by the area moment of inertia, which is the second moment of area. So let's figure that out. All right, I'm going to write, to start, I am going to start with exactly what I had up here before. And I had 2, I'm going to call that I now. I is the, is the letter we usually use to designate area moment of inertia. Again, Y, I don't know, there's 26 letters, pick one. Um, y, D, Y, D, X, but I'm going to make one change here. Instead of Y to the first power, I'm going to say Y to the second power. That's area moment of inertia. You see how this, the form of this doesn't change? All I did was change the, that integer power up there to go from first to second moment. If you want to go to third moment, make that a three. Right? We don't use third moments in mechanics as far as I've ever seen. There's probably some use for this off the top of my head. I don't know what it is. Um, and we're going to integrate exactly the same way. Well, what's the integrate, integral of y squared? It's going to be one third y cubed from zero to four x dx 2025. Okay, there you go. There's that. When you evaluate and integrate that, okay, what you're eventually going to wind up with is 4, 1, 6, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of significant figures there. Okay, you get that number, right? It's really big because a millimeter is really small. That's, that's why this is so big. If you did this in meters, this would be a really, really tiny number. It would vary. Uh, you'd have to divide it by, uh, let's see, 1,000 to the fourth power. Um, now, we know from uh, tables on the internet and all kinds of places that uh, the area moment of inertia of a triangle is the h cubed over 12. Wait a minute. Isn't that the area moment of inertia of a rectangle? It is. 
but it's the area moment of inertia of a rectangle measured from the center of the rectangle, not from the bottom. Okay? Because we're measuring the area moment of inertia of the triangle from the bottom, this really is the tabulated value. So this is correct. It looks like the area moment of inertia of a rectangle, but it, it, and it is. But in this case, it's also the expression for the area moment of inertia of the triangle because we're not measuring it from, uh, with respect to the uh, axis going through the centroid. We're measuring it through the axis at the bottom here. So even though that looks familiar, you don't need to freak out on me, okay? It's all right. I checked. And you get, no big surprise here, the same answer. So now, now we've got it. We've figured out centroid, an area moment of inertia of a relatively common shape, and we've done it using the idea of first and second moments. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.